You got a word from the Lord? Hello, Mark. How are you? This is James, but I'm fine. I meant James. I'm sorry. That's all right. Don't tell Mark. Okay. Um, you are talking right to me. I sit in the recliner with my TV and my cigarettes and my coffee and my potato chips or cheese noodles. I have my own bed. Uh, I eat just what I want to eat, sometimes not for three days, but I eat when I want to eat. And I am living in a bad seat. Okay. What about, how's your, uh, how's your, how's your, how are you sitting with God? That's really what, if, if we can figure out, if we can figure out how we're sitting with God, we can take care of a lot of the other things that we're sitting in. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So, uh, I think, I think I'm doing my will and not God's will, and I am being selfish. Um, there was another thing I was going to say about what I was. It's, um... Well... Just, just, I'm justifying my own self. That's okay. what I'm doing. Okay. I'm, I'm justifying, justifying my own habits and ways. And I know that everything is not right with what I do. But I've been smoking 46 years, and I am so addicted to cigarettes. Mm. Well. And I, and I drink about a pot and a half of coffee or two pots within 24 hours. And. Well, this is, this is what I was saying, ma'am, about this is why I asked about how are you sitting with God? How, how are you sitting in relationship with God? And, and because the reason why I say that is because when. A person's in a right relationship with God. This is kind of what we talked about in our Bible study tonight. The Paul said to the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 2.13, he talked about the word which effectively worketh in them. And so when you're in a right relationship with God and you're constantly studying God's word, it works on you. And it, keep, and it purifies a lot of the things that are in your life that don't need to be there. The addiction to cigarettes and things like that. God's word will help you get past that. So that's why I ask, how is your relationship with God? You know, are you are you a member of the Lord's church? Where do you, where do you go to church? Uh, I haven't been, but maybe three times in forty six years. Okay. So, so and one of those time, one of those times was, was in the last few months to the Church of Christ on Starlin Avenue. Okay. All right. So, are are you um, are are you the lady that you've had some Bible studies with with uh, Micah and Caleb, maybe? Just one time, yes, sir. Okay. So, see, ma'am, what I'm what I'm trying to get you to realize is one way to get out of all the the things you just described you you're sitting in is by first making a move to get right with God. We're, when we continue our study, we're going to talk about how to get into a better seat. That's what we're talking about. So, yeah. uh, <clears throat> you know, if okay. can, can I, can, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to study with you too, or, you know, we put you back in touch with uh, uh, the guys in Martinsville. I know they'll be able to, you know, they'd probably be glad to go out and have another Bible study with you again. It's just a matter of if you want help, we'll help. But you know, I, I I enjoy smoking and I enjoy drinking my coffee and I enjoy eating my snacks. Well, I'm not saying. I mean, the the the, the smoking is definitely you know harmful to your body. Uh, uh, other things, you know, the snacks and things like that. That's in in moderation. Those aren't necessarily sinful unless you give in to them. Paul said, I will not be uh, brought under the power of anything. So I think if, you know, people say, i got to have my cup of coffee in the morning and things like that, you know, if, if that's if 
that's their addiction, then that's no different than smoking the cigarettes. It's, it's being under the power of that. So, uh, but, but I'm saying. Well, I'm, this a, first, this I, first I, I'm under the power of cigarettes, that's for sure. Okay. I read my Bible and listen to you all on TV, but I light up two or three cigarettes during the time you're on TV. And sometimes when I'm reading my Bible, I do lay, lay, lay it down and reach and get a cigarette. And after I finish my cigarette, I go back to my Bible. So, yes, I'm working well, on getting that, better. Well, and, that's what I'm saying, ma'am. We, we need to help you obey the gospel, and then we can take care of a lot of these other things, too. So I'm saying? It's kind of, it's kind of like let's, let's, get the, let's make sure the horse is in front of the cart instead of getting the cart before the horse. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, the, the Bible can help you take care of a lot of things, but you got to take care of the, the, uh, the big thing first. First thing to worry about is your soul. Then we can work on the other things. Can I, can I put you on hold and get your name and, and phone number just so I can have a contact and then uh, make sure that we can stay in touch? I would love to do that. Okay. Right, I'm going to put you on hold, and, and Mark is sitting in here. And he, he'll get your name and name and phone number, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you for your call. Thank you. All right. Well, there we go, friends. So sin, and that's what sin does. You know, I appreciate the lady calling. <clears throat> but that's what sin does. Sin puts you in a seat, and then it makes it very, very hard to get out of that seat. It makes it very, very hard because that's the addictive nature of sin. So, because this is what the Bible describes sin as. Sin's a snare. It's a snare. In uh, 2 Timothy 2, in verse 26, notice this. 